Hello friends, my name is Haseeb Ansari and I welcome you all to my channel HiFiCode.com. Uh, today's video we will start by having a short recap of what we learned in the last video. I'll quickly go through the topics of the last video. So in the last video we learned how to install key clock on a given operating system and we covered Windows operating system, Linux and as well as Mac OS. And then we finally saw uh, how to install the key clock with the state of the art system and the container orchestration that is via Docker. We also saw like what is the difference between installing it in a native system, in a native operating system and on a Docker, uh, especially when the super admin user is considered and how we can create super admin user via Docker. So that was all that we uh, saw in the last video and with this thing we will start today's video like how to configure our first client in Keyclock and the client that means the application I will consider for this video will be a Spring Boot application. So without wasting any further time let's get started. From the last time uh, we left having a running installation of Keyclock and I will start from that. So first thing we need to do is log in into the administration console of Keyclock. So I will quickly go through the password and log in to the administration console. And the first screen you will see always to have the master realm of the Keyclock. And as I have already discussed in my previous video that we should not configure something directly into the master realm and we should keep the master realm as clean as possible. So what we will do, we will quickly make a new realm for our example. So I will say add realm and I'll give a name to this realm. I'll say hi-fi code and I click create. With this thing, I will quickly have a new realm setup for my examples or my applications that I want to enable SSO. So all the settings is now within the scope or is tightly bounded to this realm hi-fi code. So I will go to the client section and here we will see some client configurations already residing in this area. So we will not touch any of these client settings. They will be required by the key clock for some internal processing. But uh, instead we will go and create a new client for our examples. So the only thing required here is to give a client ID or let's also say it is a client name. So I will quickly write or give it a client name. And for this example, we are doing it for OpenID Connect. There is SAML also, but we will be creating a OpenID Connect authentication. So I'll just keep it as it is. I will leave the root URL and I'll say save. As soon as you click the save button, you will see the whole configuration form provided by Keyclock and we need to fill some of these in order to integrate our application, our client application to enable SSO. And as we can see directly in the form configuration that only the valid redirect URL is the required field in this form. And if we quickly hover on this tooltip, we will see the explanation of this field. So you can quickly read this uh, explanation to get more information about this field. So uh, right away, we can only configure this thing and then we will be ready to go. But uh, I would recommend also to give it a name for this client application. So let's give it a name and I'll say a service provider app description you can give it uh, also some examples like uh, my application front end and uh, we, we need to make sure that it is always enabled uh, we don't have to give any login theme, it's not required. We can also turn on this consent required 
uh, switch depending on whether we require for this application the user consent but for this very example we are not using this and uh, the client protocol as we said we will be doing it for open id connect the access type we need to change it from public to confidential and once we set it to confidential we will see some more properties which gets enabled or which gets showed up in the screen for now we will keep it direct gra uh, access grant enabled and uh, we will uh, see this field later but for now we will keep it off right now we need to set a valid redirect uris but for now we don't have any applications that that will be uh, using this configuration so just for now i'll keep it a wildcard so i will accept all urls as valid but i will surely come to this once we have our, our spring boot application so for the same reason we will keep all base url web admin url uh, empty and so keyclock also have this uh, web origins check so right now i will also give it as a wildcard so everything will be accepted then i will go and simply save the settings once i have the settings saved i can go to the installation tab over here i will select the json format and then i have my set settings over here so this is the piece of information that i would require on my client application that is the spring boot application to connect to this application uh, to connect to this key clock server so this was all the settings that we require in the client of key clock oh by mistake i have kept it uh, uh, disabled so make sure that this is enabled and you need to save the settings once again if you have changed anything and uh, when i made my application to confidential we would have one more tab over here which is the credential and this is very much specific to our application or client application that we will be creating in the next videos so uh, other things are like the roles for this applications the mappers and uh, and the mappers and the scope of yeah required for this application we would cover this three uh, three topics in a separate videos but uh, the scope of this video was specially like to have a basic setting to integrate our client application for this key clock login so in all we require only this setup as of now to integrate a key clock login in a spring boot application and all the other settings that we see on this page for example uh, this fine grained open id connect configuration open id connect compatibility modes and uh, advanced settings we will see this thing in the later part of the videos in the later part of the video series and uh, we will come to this topics when we require it in the configuration so with this thing uh, i would like to conclude this video here as uh, we have a successful client configuration setup so in the next video we will create a spring boot application and we will connect that application to have a login via this configuration that we have here to summarize today's video is that we created a client configuration for our upcoming spring boot application and hopefully we will be connecting this configuration to enable the login in the next video and right now we have the information that we require to give to our springboard application so with this thing i would end my video here i hope that i will see you again in the next video to complete this part fully and uh, uh, if you like my video give a thumbs up and give and show your support and also subscribe to my youtube channel so till then stay blessed stay tuned and thank you all for your presence